What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I haven't put much up on the YXZ lately. I feel like I've been slacking for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, we're going to do a little uh, a little update slash review video, whatever you want to call it, of uh, the Silver Turbo Kit. Now that I've had it for a bit, I feel like I can kind of give an honest opinion on it. I've put enough mileage on it to, I don't know, somewhat figure it out, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyways, guys, like always, um, I really appreciate if you subscribe. It doesn't cost nothing. It's free. All you got to do is click a button. It helps me out a lot. So if you guys could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, guys. I really would. Um, for those of you that are uh, returning subscribers, thanks for staying tuned. Um, so yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit about this silver turbo kit. So I've had it, I don't know, a little over a year now. It's been, uh, I, I had it all last season and you know, we're just kind of halfway through this season. Um, but I probably got about 1,500, maybe 1,400 kilometers on it, which is, I don't know, 1,000 miles, something like that. So <sighs> we're going to talk about... Uh, my opinion anyways on uh, what i think about it so um i already put up uh, a video last summer after i had installed this of some pros and cons of the kit just from the install side of things um some good points and bad points and things i did like didn't like about it um but if you want to uh see an in-depth version of that like i said uh, i have that video out so you can take a look at that um but <sighs> After driving it for a while, overall I like it. Um, I've had some minor issues, mostly with the tune, to be honest. And um, this is just my opinion, guys. Like I said, everybody has their own opinion. They have their own experiences, what they like, what they don't like. Um, but I've had a lot of issues with the tune on it. It has a, a bunch of rich spots that'll go full rich on my AFR. I have a AM wideband gauge, and it only goes down to 10.0 on the AFR. Um, and, and I'll hit 10 on it and if you sit there for a few seconds, it'll misfire very bad running extremely rich So I started off. I bought this kit. I um, I bought it with the I think it's a gems controller I can't remember what it's called uh, the really basic fuel controller the EJK Fuel controller um, that comes with it My recommendation if you're gonna buy this kit spend the extra money and get the Dynajet right off the bat Don't even think about it. It's I think it was an extra 200 bucks or something which I should have bought um, from the get-go um, just do it spend the extra couple hundred bucks and if you have to make any changes to the tuning you you have the free software to do so or with the other basic controller you can make very minor adjustments on that controller um, but it wasn't enough to help fix my problem so when you're making adjustments on that small controller that comes with it um, you're just making like I said very minor adjustments to the map that is on that controller and for me like I, I could put it uh, full range one way full range the other way trying to pull or add fuel and um, Would not work for me actually with that controller if I remember right you can't Actually pull fuel you can only add so if you act if you have to pull fuel Which in my case I did because I had huge rich spots. You cannot do it on that controller Anyways, so right off the bat if you're buying this kit spend the money I swear to God the extra 200 bucks is worth it. Just do it buy the buy the um, the Dynajet uh, upgrade um but yeah so quick rundown on this if you guys haven't seen the other videos uh, i ran it last season at five pounds all stock motor um it does make a big difference i'm not gonna lie it does make a big difference power wise it's a lot over stock um but you really got to consider your options so if you if you're just wanting to make a little bit more power like that five pound setup will put you at about 150 horse if that's all you want to make eh you could almost get that naturally aspirated um, with an exhaust tuned, you know, cams. Um, you can do an airbox spacer on the factory airbox. Uh, there's, um, I can't remember those pieces you change inside the airbox. Um, but you could change those as well. Anyways, you can get it. What I'm getting at is you can almost get it to 150 horse, 140 horse naturally aspirated anyways. So if that's all you want, you, you got to look at your options, right? And uh, it's a more reliable, in my opinion, setup going naturally aspirated because these motors like to throw rods with boost and uh you know if, if you can avoid that and make you know 150 horse na why not right but uh, if you want more which is what i wanted out of it um turbo setup's the way to go so there's a lot of misconceptions on 
how much boost this turbo can or cannot make. A lot of people say it'll only make five pounds, it'll only make seven pounds. A lot of people say, hey, it'll spike, you know, 10, 12 pounds and it won't hold anything past eight. Um, I've been playing with it a lot lately and I've got it set right now so that when I smash it, it'll hit 10, 11 and it'll hold 10. I could push it a little more than that, but I haven't tried and I don't really want to, to be honest. I'm not running shimless buckets or anything like that. Um, so I keep it at 10 pounds and it holds at 10 and it pulls really good. It's not uh, slow by any means. It's uh, It pulls well. Um, but I guess there's a bit of an answer for you guys. If people, uh, people are wondering how much boost this kit can make. I don't have a total answer, but I can tell you it'll make 10 and hold 10. It will do it. And, you know, that's almost the limit of what you can run pump gas wise anyways. 91, let's say. Um, with the factory timing in the ECU. You, you can't really run much more than that. Um, otherwise, you're going to run into other issues, right? So you're limited You're limited by the timing in the factory ECU if you, if you want to run pump. Unless you go to a standalone system, then uh, you could do lots of things. But uh, factory ECU, 10 pounds is kind of where I think is be the safe limit. I wouldn't want to push more than that. One bit of advice for you guys that have this kit. Um, one thing that helped my tune immensely, I know I keep talking about the tune. <laughs> I've just put so much time into it. Every time I think about this, I just think about tuning it there. Um, one thing that helped me like majorly with the tune is when you get this kit, the map sensor itself um, for this kit is plumbed into the wastegate line. You can't really see, but it comes plumbed into the wastegate line. You have your map sensor hanging off it. That is not a good boost reference. So if you, if you have a boost leak anywhere in your system, um, you know, in your intercooler piping before or after the intercooler on your intake anything whatever it doesn't matter um you're not going to necessarily see that leak because the map sensor is only reading that pressure off the wastegate line so it's not a very clean signal so what i did is i moved that map sensor i don't think you'll be able to see it oh maybe you can you can kind of see where the block is there but there is a line on your throttle bodies that has a a t it goes to each uh each cylinder each throttle body cylinder um that is your intake pressure measurement point on the throttle bodies on the intake itself and that is a good spot to get a reading so i moved the map sensor from the wastegate line to there and it helped clean the tune up a lot and it, it's responding a lot better to changes when i make changes on the tune and uh, it helped me out a lot so if you guys are having issues um, like i was try that because it uh, it makes a big difference so would i recommend this kit i guess would be the big question um hmm Let's talk about the couple of downsides really quick. I know, like I said, I had it in another video. Um, the intercooler doesn't have a fan on it, which isn't that big of a deal. You can add one. Uh, the fuel controller it comes with, not very good. Um, the turbo is very small, which is good and bad. I think it's limited to the boost it can make. Like I said, I didn't want to run more than 10, so it's good for my application because I only want to run 10. But if you want to run a lot more than that, I don't think the it's physically big enough to do so. So you're limited to that. Um, and the absolute biggest problem of all, like I said, that's been uh, a real pain for me is the tuning. Uh, I've played around with it a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, I've got it to where it's pretty good now. I still have to do some more work. Um, but for me, that was a problem for a long time. And then one last thing I will mention, because this, this bothers me a lot, is the intake setup they give you on this. Look at this. It's this tiny little K&N filter. Now, I don't know the CFMs of what that flows. I actually contacted K&N and gave them the part number to try and figure out what it flows. Because uh, I'm trying to design a different intake for this. I absolutely hate that K&N intake. And I never got a response back from them, so I don't know what the answer is. But uh, just looking at it, <laughs> there's no way it's enough. Like, that is... Uh, really lackluster for uh you know a big three cylinder thousand cc engine that to me to me anyway like i said this is all my opinion to me that is like ridiculous to put that on there but once again these are all things that you got to look at the cost of the kit right the kit's very cheap so they're, you're gonna well very cheap compared to other kits so you're gonna have these slight downfalls right but anyways like i said i that can for me it's got to go i'm already working on a different kit with a donaldson airbox donaldson style airbox that i'm gonna mount under there and get rid of that but uh yeah so would i recommend this kit i'll put it down i'll put it like this it's it's hard for me to say yes or no um if you're willing to put in the time and 
deal with the fact that it's a little bit finicky and you, you kind of have to upgrade a few little things and you're going to have to spend some time playing with the tune a bit. Um, is it worth it? I guess so. Um, as long as you don't want to run, you know, let's say more than 10 pounds of booze, maybe 12. I, I don't know if it'll get there, but I guess so. But if you, uh, if you don't want to play with that and if you have more budget, um, the biggest thing is the budget. If you don't have the budget for, you know, the bigger, more expensive kits, then it's not even an option for those. But if you do, if you do have the money for the other kits, I would say I would go with those kits over this just because of the, the time I've had to play around with everything and this and that and try to get it to work well. It's got to the point where it's pretty good now, but it took a lot to get there. And uh, when you address the downfalls of the kit, like that intake, I have to make an intake, that's extra money. I want to put a fan on that intercooler, that's extra money. Um, the kit doesn't have a blow off valve, that's extra money. Um, things that aren't, I guess, 100% needed, but things that I would like to be there. But once again, it's all part of the price, right? Um, so if you have the money to buy a better kit, I would say do that. And if you're willing to spend it, I would say do that. Um, there's Weller. Weller makes a kit out there now. Uh, Dirt Launch products. Everybody seems to like the DLP kit kits. Uh, they have a stage one, two, and I think they released a three recently where they're claiming some pretty wild power on pump gas. Um, and people seem to like those kits. GYTR kits have been around forever too. I've heard good and bad about those kits that goes with anything. Um, MPI used to make a kit, but I think they're out of business now. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're out of business. Um, but if you can afford the bigger kits, spend the more money, get the bigger kit. But if you're limited to a budget, this does work and it does make good power. Um, at lower boost levels, it makes good power. The power comes on early, which is a nice thing. Like it's a downfall that the turbo is small, but an upside is the power comes on really early. Like I'll, I'll it'll start pulling hard at 3000. You know what I mean? You, you don't have to spool it up at all for that boost to hit just because it's such a small turbo. Um, but yeah, I guess that's, that's my opinion on it. Um, if you guys want to, if you guys have any ideas of other stuff you want to see on the channel, if you have any questions, uh, write it in the comments, write a comment about this video, uh, or write a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I normally try pretty hard to, uh, answer all your guys' questions in the comments. I'm pretty active with getting on that. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you guys got suggestions of what you want to see, just let me know, put it in the comments and, um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's it. I'm trying to think of anything else that would be relevant to, to bring up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, you know what? One thing that's important is um, I've had a lot of people message me. So I, I guess a lot of people have seen my other videos of me talking about this. And um, I get a lot of messages with people that also have that same rich spot problem I had. And some people have been getting some pretty bad customer service from Silber. Um, I can't really comment on that because, like I said, that's that's their their story, not mine. But uh, one one other thing to consider when you're looking at this, right? So, um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, stay tuned for more. I guess uh, a lot of people have been asking about when we're going to put this against the X3 again. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry, guys. I know it's taking longer than uh, anticipated, um, but it's coming. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Hey! Subscribe to the channel!